Welcome, 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 my good brother. You there? See you logging in. See you connecting on. Says you're connecting into the video now. Uh, you're tapping into your audio as well, I'm seeing from my side. How you doing, my good brother? You can't hear? Okay, let's see, let's see. Mute it. I think you're muted. You got to hit the mute button. I think it automatically mutes you as soon as you as soon as you log in. Ah. Yeah, we're gonna. You, you're gonna have to have some type of audio. These are just just my headphones, typically. Uh, so, can you hear me? Can Can you hear me clear? Can Can you hear me? I think you just have to mute. There should be a, like a, a mute button. You just have to click it, and you should be able to to tap in with audio. There you go. I think you're connected with audio. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to use my uh, cell phone. I was trying to use my laptop, um, but it, for whatever reason, it wasn't allowing me. Typically, when I get on Zoom, there's a um, a call-in number that I always call into. Do you not use that? Uh, no, typically I, I don't. And I'm actually, to be honest, very, very still new to the platform with Zoom. Okay. I typically use Facebook for my platform for everything. And since they actually remove certain features, I've had to switch over to Zoom. So, you know, some of those features I'm still learning and in the process. But uh, nevertheless, you know, the enemy is a liar, man. I appreciate having you on this morning. And uh, I mean, it, it's good, man. Even if you want to go with your video from your cell phone, that's fine. I mean, I, I've done interviews uh, from the cell phone with video and audio, and it's not 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 that big of a deal. And uh, most importantly, I just appreciate having you on uh, because I, I admire your, your platform. I admire what you're doing. And uh, I wanna make sure that I can reach out to you to learn more about who you are, uh, learn about you know your movement and what you're doing. And uh, especially on this primary morning, okay? And uh, you, 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 you tuned in still, you with me? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this out. I, I've never done it from this point. Yeah. So, so, so at, yeah, I'm still, again, I'm still learning, but man, I, I gotta be honest. I, I appreciate you uh, from black man to black man in general. And, and you and I are both believers. The Bible says no, no man after the flesh. So you and I know what that means when I say black man, that I'm not talking about any certain uh, racial agenda or anything like that, but I'm saying I appreciate the number one, the role model of excellence that I see you displaying. And I appreciate, see, I, I often uh, survey the grassroots. I often survey um, even just within the church to see what what leaders, young leaders do we have. And uh, I like to promote their, their message and they may not even know me, <laughs> okay? Uh, and in this case, I ran across just some powerful statements that you've made 
Uh, I've, I've witnessed your beautiful family. And, and man, I just, I want to know more about Cedric Knight. Like, who, who are you? Uh, yeah. how, how did you come about being a conservative? And I just want to know more about your story because I'm intrigued. Uh, first and foremost, I don't know what you know about my story and we can get into that. But honestly, man, I, I'm, I'm tapping in as a fan, man. I, I appreciate you and your movement. I, I know you're fresh out of Facebook jail. I know they tried to shut you down for a minute. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. You're back and you came back right. strong. But I, I want to know, man, today's a primary. Of course, we got to get out and vote uh, and push things. I don't know exactly in every state how everything is coordinated. Uh, but today is an important day. Uh, did you want to start with prayer, if you don't mind, uh, to get it started? Yeah. The man of God, I believe pastor yeah. as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, we just come humble submission to your throne of grace. We first honor you for who you are and what you are in our lives, oh God. We just worship you in spirit and in truth. Now we just come to a humble statement asking you for forgiveness for any sins that we have done, any wrong thoughts, any deeds before we ask you for anything. Now, oh God, let this message go forth. It might be able to encourage uh, other saints, other believers and non-believers. Let your word go forth, the true foundations and the true principles that you have set within your word uh, that we might be able to abide in, that we might know your attributes and your characteristics, and we forever want to give you the praise and the glory and let your spirit move in this meeting, oh God. Let my tongue be a ready writer for your people, oh God, and let your spirit lead and guide us into truth and our righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So let's get started, my brother. Tell me your story, man. Who, who is Cedric Knight, man? Let, let yeah. me know who's this powerful man of God. Yeah, I, I try to condense it because uh, okay. I can along with it you know how any preacher is <laughs> but i like to try to be uh you know condensing and kind of get hit the, the hip and main point but one thing uh i, I was fortunate um i, I made a, a post with my parents uh on yesterday my mother's birthday okay. um they brought me up in a good home medium me, you know medium, middle class home um i actually grew up as a catholic uh up into the seventh grade so I always had some type of concept. I always had some type of um, a knowledge of God, uh, but not necessarily the totality of who he is because I never really you know, studied God um, in that sense. Uh, but that was a good foundation. It gave me some type of conservative values. I saw you know, my dad going to work. I saw my mom taking care of me, you know, doing the family structure things that really molded and shaped me. Uh, throughout my life so that that was kind of you know growing up you play play sports uh, i'm an older guy now i don't have all the uh athleticism <laughs> to have but um up until the seventh grade uh once then i uh, became a baptist uh i then got i gave my life to christ around well, i think i was around 13 years old okay. when i my life to christ um has a different denomination and uh, the spirit was just strong on me you know but but from there um dealing with certain spiritual battles uh, since day one in my life uh, being in the catholic church they had me praying to mary and all these other different people which i didn't uh, necessarily know but it, it kind of opened opened me up to a different dimension a uh, different spiritual uh, presence that i well, that we all deal with but for whatever reason god had a call in my life and wanted me to understand a little bit more for whatever reason but you know when, once i went to the baptist church um, I was, uh, you know, I, I still wasn't living the right lifestyle. Uh, I saw people drinking, smoking, doing all these things, right? It was just, I thought I just had to be a, a nominal Christian uh, as far as just kind of going through the motions. So I was a great basketball athlete, uh, top uh, top two guy in the state of Kentucky, which is great. Okay. Um, and, and, and like in the state of Kentucky. But, you know, during that time, I was still living in sin and doing the things that I wanted to, right? Um, and then when I went to college, I went to Illinois State University for a year, got a full ride scholarship, and I wanted to come back home to call, walk home to Coach Rick Bettino's team, um, the Louisville basketball program when he first took over in 2000. Um, and I negotiated with God. I told God, I said, I want to do this, this, and this. You know, I gave up some stuff, and I got the position. Uh, but what one thing that happened was um, because I didn't really read the scripture, because I didn't know um, God like I should have known. It was a girl that I was messing with. Um, it was a girl, you know, as an athlete, you, you talk, you mess with a lot of girls, right? <laughs> exactly. I've been through the darkness, uh, but, you know, God, of course, he kept me. 
So she, she then introduced me to this guy named Baba. And Baba, I did not know he was a warlock. And so he reads poems, right? Mm -hmm. So me being a Christian, I didn't know that was bad. I didn't know anything that was wrong with it. So he went in his basement and he started reading my palm and all this. Two weeks later, I went up for a rebound with Coach Ripetino, came down and broke my fifth metatarsal. So um, I broke my foot, had four major foot surgeries, and that indicated to me that I opened up myself to a spiritual realm that was demonic. Okay, I went, I went in contract with this warlock, this demons that, that was speaking to him because I did not know. Correct. So, so once that happened uh, throughout uh, my life, I, I started seeking God a little bit more, and I was like, God, I want some more truth. There has to be some power. Um, and then I, I met my wife. I fasted for six weeks. I read a book by Tom and Nelson, Love, Intimacy, and Relationship. It's a great book. Just trying to find a spouse and the things that you want to look for uh, in an individual. Um, so from there, I was like, God, it's got to be more to your word. It's got to be more to your truth. So she introduced me uh, to the power of the Holy Ghost, Acts 238, which I never read before. So, you know, I, I rededicated myself, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. And then that's when my life really started to change. Uh, but throughout that, you know, with the four foot surgeries, um, I, I still struggled with uh, my foot injuries and things like that. So I had to go to work um, and take care of a family. Uh, I started working for Enterprise Rent-A-Car, uh, their master training program. And once we got married, stress and things like that started happening. Um, uh, I started taking my pain medicine for my pain, but also with emotional stress. And then I kind of it kind of got out of hand at that point. And, and you know? not to interrupt you, but I'm formerly with Hertz, so you know, former management with Hertz, so I, I know exactly where you're coming from. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rivals, right there, naturally. Okay, okay. We still got more. We still got more cars, though. I think. We're still the best, though. For the last time I checked, I know we're going through some financial <laughs> things with COVID, but from last time I heard, though. But you know, keep going, keep going. Yeah. So, so during that during that course, you know, stress. I think it was around 2012. 12 ish, uh, with the pressure with the with new baby, I started taking my pain medicine um, a little bit too much. So I, I then became uh, more addicted to the, the painkillers that my doctor was uh, prescribing me. So it was about a two year period that was really dark in my life, um, you know, just dealing with that, that demon. Uh, but then I was in church service one day and a preacher came and preached called Take It Off. Um, and then <clears throat> once he was he started preaching, he came up to me and said, just take it off. And I literally felt the power of God in my life. I said, okay, if I felt the power of God, then I can use that same power to overcome my circumstances and my situation. So <clears throat> once that happened, I started to really dig into um, why was I praying to these different gods, you know, this warlock, this witchcraft. Um, and if you understand the, the, the root word of pharma, pharma, uh, pharmaceutical is pharmaca, uh, which is sorcery and witchcraft. See, I did not know this. So I went down this, I went down this big rabbit hole like, okay, I, I'm hearing stuff, but I didn't really need to search um, for some more truth. Um, so that's kind of my spiritual walk. And then, you know, based off me understanding the scriptures uh, and the lifestyle I used to live, I used to have a liberal state of mind. But when you start reading the scriptures, you become a conservative. <laughs> yeah, you have you have to tighten it up. You 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 have yeah. to get refined there politically. You can't go along with the yeah. with the, just the liberal mainstream leftist or liberal ideology. It no longer fits at that point. All right, because everything that the liberals are doing is contrary to the word of God uh, in, in regards to marriage, sexual immorality, um, anything. You know, calling a man a woman and woman a man, and I mean it's just just on and on and on everything that is is good they are calling evil and everything is evil they are calling good and yes we um so that that was you know a little bit about my <clears throat> my work you know now i work for um a bank i won't mention the name um, but i work for a bank. Uh, i do have my master's in business administration uh, okay MBA. okay so a little bit about business um and then i'm in seminary school southern baptist in rural kentucky so <clears throat> that's great so, 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 so not only are you 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 articulate in, in everything that I always thought that you were, but now hearing the facts and just what you lining your life up against. So you are extraordinary as I always thought, just hearing just from your message. Um, and just honestly, I, I meet a lot of different people, but not everybody has the back, the, the, the actual details, the letters to back it up. 
And exactly. uh, as myself, I have an MBA, so we both are MBA graduates. So, <laughs> so, so understand th there's an interconnection here. And uh, from day one, uh, I've only wanted to support your movement and whatever I could do. But you said something that was so profound. And just to start, so for every, all, all of the listeners, this is the Urban Difference. I'm Darwin Giles. I'm the host here. This is Cedric Knight, a uh, good brother, man of God and conservative. I admire and respect. Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, we can get that out there. But most importantly, uh, from my perspective, I came from the inner city. So my story wasn't uh, anything necessarily middle class. I mean, if it was, it was from a sense of my grandmother who worked very hard. Uh, I'm native of Flint, Michigan. I know you probably heard of the water crisis and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And I was raised pretty much by a single parent. I mean, but, but mm -hmm. my grandparents. So so not only was it not, not my mother, but it was my grandparent who, and that's, it, it, there's a difference. Even though you're raised by grandma and your grandma's baby, that ain't necessarily the same as your mother. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I basically came up from the inner city where I was surrounded around everything you can name of. So my father was a drug addict. Uh, on drugs, my father uh, been to prison uh, for for beating my mother. So you know you see that at a young age, and you vow to never be like that type of person ever in your life because you see that type of trauma and how that that abuses a woman and hurts a woman. Uh, on top of that, you see my mother, who I had a six year old brother who died. So my mother uh, never really recuperated from his death. So she's mm -hmm. always had issues in, in those areas where I've had to take care of her and, and those of the likes. But ever since she, she pretty much, nothing hereditary, anything, as far as her mental state, but if you lose a child, and, and Lord yeah. forbid, you know, I, I never would know. Like, I have a son that just turned four. I wouldn't know what that was for him to turn six right. and lose right. him. Like, that, that's the worst pain imaginable. So yeah. you can only imagine the mental anguish and what she went through uh, but but it, it was from that incident that pretty much took my mother downhill uh, when it came to that. Um, but by the grace of God, I had a friend who introduced me to the Church of God in Christ at the time. And, you know, they're very Pentecostal. So yeah, I me. came up, you know, I, I came up holding it. Right. So so that at a young age, I got introduced and that, that from my best friend uh, and he took me to church. And my life never was the same after that. Like, uh, probably I would say the trials and tribulations got real for me. You know, it's one thing when you, you're you not really any threat to the enemy. When you're in darkness, you ain't that bad to the enemy. You don't even notice the hits. Right. You start trying to be around some word. You start trying to be around a, a, a man of God, woman of God, somebody. You start hearing the faith. All type of hell break loose. And um, as a young man, I can tell you my life has been marked by adversity and trial and crisis after crisis but the lord has always been faithful the lord is good um as you heard me say i, I have an mba three business degrees i've worked for some of the best companies just left uh eau claire wisconsin with the billionaire uh republican family the menard family you know they, they're like the founders of the home improvement store menards i don't know if you, you i'm pretty sure you have some menards in your area um i don't know i got one I can throw a rocket one right now. So, just, so are you in Indiana or Kentucky? So I'm in South, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, but I live in Southern Indiana. Anytime okay. I say Indiana or Jeffersonville, Indiana, no okay. one knows Louisville, gotcha. Kentucky. Okay, because I got family in Louisville, and okay. uh, but more importantly, so you, you're in the Midwest. So we okay, cool. You rocking with us? Okay, I have to reach out to my brother Wayne Bradley and tell him about. Do you know Wayne Bradley? I don't, I don't think so. Okay, um, well, well, you know what? I got to introduce you to my brother, Wayne Bradley, man. He, he's a good yeah. guy from here. He did a lot of conservative work out of Detroit. They sometimes call him the conservative bro or conservative brother. But, but okay. long story short, um, I come from the inner city culture. I come from a background of the drug culture. Um, sure. And seeing my parents traumatized throughout their life, uh, seeing my grandmother. So as, as I begin to, again, have this call in my life because I accepted the Lord. I was one of these young kids in Bible school, Bible study, Sunday school that always ask all the questions, irritate yeah. everybody because I was serious. <laughs> but what they didn't know is that in my home life, I needed God. I Amen. didn't have no other options. It was either this God thing got to be real yeah. or I, I got to, I'm finna be in the streets and we know yeah. where that's going to lead to. Right. So by the grace of God, my both my parents been to prison. I've never been to prison. Wow. In the situations where I could have been, but thank God. Uh, so when people talk about criminal justice reform, and I could drop some nuggets on that, 
uh, just to say that most people, if they don't have the right legal representation, will not yeah. be represented the correct way. Now, it's yeah. not saying that they're automatically going to be racially uh, uh, discriminated against, but it is saying that if they don't have someone that's going to defend and fight for the truth, then more yeah. than likely they won't have the right outcome. And I'm just thankful and fortunate that God has put the right people in my life who fought for me, who advocated for me when things uh, came about. But as I began to grow older, my grandparents got sick. So the ones who raised were raising me uh, caught cancer, both of them, lung cancer. My grandfather worked in General Motors and mm -hmm. he worked when they didn't have a lot of regulations. So, you know, he worked in a plant where, you know, back in the day, back in the day, you probably was exposed to all type of harmful chemical things. Uh, and then my grandmother, unfortunately, she smoked. So we know where hers came from. Uh, but basically, both of my grandparents uh, were, were, were uh, succumbed to cancer, lung cancer. Uh, lost my immediate family between 2004 and 2008. So I think as a young man, coming from the lifestyle I come from, both of my parents are unstable. My grandparents now are being attacked by cancer. They leave. I mean, I'm at a crossroads in my life. Either yeah. I'm going to really follow this God right. and I'm going to try to go to school and make myself better in education right. Right. Or, or I have to commit my life to a lifetime of crime, which I know all the world about because yeah. I come from that way, you know, so, but I, I'm thankful getting saved at an early age. I don't know the quote that says basically it's better to raise young men or, or children basically essentially than, than repair broken men. That yeah. is so true. Because yes, as a young man, I got faith in my life. Uh -huh. I got education and went to school and I was, God just met my way. Man, I, I went to some of the most successful, like I, I had with the, one of the first apprenticeships out of my college, uh, mm -hmm. from Baker College in Flint, uh, George Washington University. I lived there, uh, was, was a part of one of the, the most uh, prestigious uh, PR firms that I'm aware of at the time, uh, mm -hmm. TMG Strategies, now McGann Group. Uh, so my life culturally was just being transformed. I mean, think, my father's a victim of a homicide in 2008. Within a month, he's he's done in June, uh, like, or what, July, June, July. By August, I have to get on a plane, you know, like within the next day of this memorial, and I have to go to do this apprenticeship. And I didn't let it stop me because my dad would have wanted me to reach that height that he, nobody in our family had ever did. So coming from my background, Coming from my uh, educational uh, world, academia helped save my life. The Lord helped save my life. And he Man. put all those things in my, in my pathway to build me, to grow me, to foster Man. me. So meeting another young man as yourself, uh, first of all, I want to say just from the inner city, a, a well-educated and articulate black man is not something we should be ashamed of. I don't, Amen. You, don't have to, you don't have to come from the streets like I did to right. be able to make an impact. And sure. I respect you because... Um, one of the reasons and how we actually came about, I read a quote when you said something like uh, on, on, the, on the, the, the rim of, I believe you said, if you follow Candace Owens or the Republican Party more than God, he's like, look, block or unfriend me. Now, I know you're not a hater. You're not a hater. You, you no. love God. You love yes. conservatism. And in my opinion, you the black man, we should be trying to help promote and push. Because right. you got a story, nobody would have never known you were on any type of opioids or any type of pill addiction, or nobody would even know that. And in my mind, when I hear these celebrity athletes and I hear their story, I mean, that's what you remind me of right now. You remind me of, of one of these uh, young black men that has, has went through some things and, and now you have a message to tell. Um, mm -hmm. And so and, and just to expound on that, um, that's how I met you, by the way. You know, I, okay. I, I was looking at some of those things and I could just respect because I'm not a hater either. And we right. may have different reasons on why we may disagree with someone like Candace Owings. But right. one thing I just heard you say, and I'm probably, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you would be someone who shy away from mentoring young men in the inner cities. Or I don't, I don't think you would be someone who wouldn't share and really try to meet a person where they are in order to help build and, and be successful as far as whether it's conservatism or Christianity in the sense of us coming up and, and building each other in faith. Because we just went over our stories. We just talked right. about where we came from. God transitioned us from darkness to light, how we had you know, uh, trials and tribulations. We persevered those things. And now we're at a refining point. We have a story to tell. Sure, sure. So 
you tell me a little bit about that. Like, what made you to put that post? Because I don't know. I don't know what the situation yeah, um, was. So, so you know, I, I follow Candace Owens. Um, me, uh, first, God is first. Uh, right. The script trumps any and everybody. It trumps President Trump. It, it trumps Cedric Knight and his thoughts and his will. Uh, his understanding, the word of God stands. Um, if, if Jesus being the word of God had to quote the written word against the enemy of the word, then we should stand on the word of God too. No other opinions, nothing else, right? So that trumps any and everybody uh, overall. So if it is contrary to the word, it's going to be contrary to God. We all follow God's glory. I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm working on myself still too. Amen. So I just put that out there. I'm not self-righteous or you know there's no there's no fault of me even paul said there was a thorn in his side so we all deal with our struggles each day um one thing that really uh, i guess really concerned me with with candace owens was the death of um uh, not only george floyd but the uh, i forgot the other guy I mean, yeah him in regards to attacking a person's character um, to as if he deserved it or to be justified of being killed, regardless of, because like I just gave my story. So I was looking at it like, so if, if you guys knew my story as a conservative, these conservatives want to say, oh, he was, uh, you know, he was this and he was that. He deserved and, and, and listen to me, brother. If they know your story, when yeah. do they get my story? So then it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and, we, all and got, so... we all got, we all got a passion. It ain't pretty. Okay. Correct. So, you know, because you're a conservative doesn't necessarily make you right with God. Correct. Um, just, you know, principles and things that we think. But I, I've seen racism on both sides. I've seen. Correct. It's, you know, it's, so that what that was kind of the defining point. And I love her message. You know, I always I equated her to like a Harriet Tubman waking African-Americans up like such as myself and, uh, you know, men and women of the history of the Democratic Party. So, you know, coming off the uh, slave plantation, mental slave plantation of asking the master to do this free health care, free, free school, all this stuff free for the vote. So um, that was kind of the, 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 the intent uh, that was behind it. Uh, and it was just like, hey, I had to throw it out there. And I am, I'm, I mean, I would say the same thing with Trump. He's, he, his mannerisms are not great, but his policies are great for the, you know, for the country right. and the uh, people. But God is still working on him. Like he's working on you. And right. he's working on so, 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 so understand, I didn't know anything about uh, the conflict or what it was. So it was George Floyd. And so, so just to be clear, she's, she was proven wrong with her man Arbery. It, it, in pre-trial, oh yeah, in pre-trial, they came out and stated that the person uh, who actually shot um, uh, Ahmed Arbery stood over him and made racial slurs. So the person that was recording the video has now proved oh. it was race based. Uh, it was some there was some racial prejudice or tensions or whatever right. there. That was mm -hmm. already proven in pretrial. So that's actually discovery you can pull up. Right. The other thing is um, when it came to that. She also stated some things about Ahmed Arbery, about him being a criminal. He was, he was breaking into the house. And at, at some point, you and me, black man, come on, we got to have this conversation. Sure. I felt she was really attacking black men. <laughs> Not, it, despite these men background and where they came from, just right. like we don't like feminism to attack men, I right. felt Candace Owens was attacking black men. Sure. Something she don't understand is something she don't get. And I, I don't knock her. Maybe if we can meet her and talk to her, we can say, hey, listen, we're not against you. Because I think as you, I supported her up until this point. And, and I, I felt overwhelmingly uh, convicted to, to stand and say, wait a minute, I, I think you're wrong on that one. And more importantly, at, at our time in our country of being so divided, I don't think it's OK to put jet fuel on the fire. She didn't even just put gasoline. She put jet fuel on it, okay? And then it's so many um, well-intended, uh, uh, whether it's minorities or, or uh, Caucasian patriots throughout the country who follow her. Uh, and, and more importantly, uh, a lot of these people are ignorant to really some cultural things. They don't really know our struggle. They don't really know what it is to, to go through what we go through. And I understand that. Uh, you can't deny it's a black America, okay? And so there is, we're, we're getting better. It's, it's been progress, but we're still working. It's still a work in progress. And so um, 
being that she's also from PR, she's from a communications background. Remember, she was the director for uh, Turning Point. So communication is my strong point. I, I, I've trained in PR, uh, training in, in uh, communication. So what I realized she was doing was putting disinformation out and putting things out kind of to, to for whatever motive. I, I, want, I want to meet her to kind of have her explain how can you put out details into certain things that we have not proven. I mean, even the Bible says, bear not false witness. So we really don't have a right. We can give our opinion. Hey, I think this is what he was doing, but I don't think that's what she was doing. She went to kind of solidify, hey, this is what he was doing. And right. because and just, she, being a credible person that people view as credible on the right, she just fed it to the masses. And I think that was right. irresponsible. Yeah. Uh, not only do I think it was irresponsible, but I believe it just wasn't true. And we can't be so much of wanting to beat the Democrats and liberals that we're willing to lie, cheat, steal, or do whatever to right. win. And, right. and I'm not with that. You know, I'm all for conservatism and standing up, but I'm also not about condemning and downing people. I don't have right. to say my people or black right. people. I don't want to condemn people, period. Like sure. I, the Bible says not, that there's no condemnation. And I don't know these people in their hearts. Right. Uh, I don't. So when it came to even, uh, so again, Hamed Arbery, many, the details she stated, the homeowner came out and stated that he wasn't breaking the law. He hadn't stolen anything. So yeah. I get it. Maybe the, the media said some things that were not necessarily 100% accurate, but she went far beyond attacking the media. Uh, right. these, these men, families are still grieving. These are national stories, and this has been brought to the forefront. And she represents and, and can affect all of us. Right. Because of her position and who's pushing her, uh, it can it can make us all look like we share the same views and we don't. Exactly. And right. so for me, it wasn't loving. It wasn't the correct thing to do. So let's go to George uh, Florida. I wasn't going, but now we're here. The body cam has came out. Have you had a chance to look at that? No, no I haven't seen it. Um, and, and and you know, I want to touch on that point before we you know yeah. jump into this, you know with, with 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 that particular case with Candace. Correct. I have great wishes with Christ. That's like I, that's why I stated that's the first and uh, utmost importance in my life. Um, if a did if a person did have some type of history, uh, okay. we must passion just like Jesus showed compassion at the man on the cross. Um, you know, he said he was a sinner. We all are sinners, and if we have fallen short of God's glory, um, and we see a video where someone literally murdered us based off our skin color or something like that, we should have that right, uh, and we should have our conservative black leaders like Candace Owens. Uh, to speak out against that, regardless of her base or regardless, but it's almost it was like you can't rattle the base to the far, far right um, because of the situation. And like you said, to your point, it's almost like you are attacking every black individual, every black man, uh, as if we don't have struggles uh, in some capacity. You know, white people got struggles too. I just don't want to be that guy to play the victim mentality. We all have struggles, um, but or circumstance like that that's on video uh clearly shows that a person was tracked down in right. murder blocked blood. off blocked Black. off uh, I mean, prevented from being able to don't, really pass right, don't, don't go and say what he did and what he didn't do properly to justify him being murdered in the way he that he did so that was um like okay god you you've been using her but are you taking that anointing away? You know, has she shifted or has she turned? Something's going on. But again, that's not for me to judge. I, you know, I still follow her on Twitter. Um, you know, I, one thing that I've learned is that uh, even in the scripture, it says we prophesy in part and we know in part. Not one man knows it all besides Jesus Christ, right? No preacher knows it all. Cedric doesn't know it all. Darren, you don't know it. No one knows it all. Um, so I, I try to understand and be empathetic towards not only her, but any and everyone, when they come talking common sense, okay? Correct, I, correct. That, they just, they just kind of cuckoo. <laughs> correct. So, correct. you know, I, I try to um, have a balance, um, like, like we talked about, um, because she does say some really good stuff, you know, from the base side for, you know, as far as the black like community. Conservatism, yeah, yeah, right. absolutely, politics. Yeah, as far as that point. But do I follow her uh, wholeheartedly like I used to? Absolutely not. You know, I still support her, but I now have to take back and really, okay, I can't really be promoting her uh, in that capacity. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen the video of George Floyd coming out. Um, I'm hearing stuff, um, but I haven't, you know, maybe you can fill well, me in. So, so basically, um, 
Hey man, this, this interview is really good. Uh, and I hope we don't run out of time. But basically, I'll have you on again, my brother, because because I'm, I'm trying to build a fellowship here with you, my brother. Okay. But 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 you hit something. You said something shifted. And I honestly can say I, I believe so, too. We all have to be careful in this conservatism, our activism, no matter how high we get pumped up, no matter how much you know pride is pumped in us because of our accolades and our successes, to stay low, to stay humble, to not yeah. feel like, you know, I've seen this and this is this is real. Some people have been promoted and when they have that dry season when, you know, they're not as popular or they're, you know, when it heard from this person for a while, then they just come out and they do something very sporadic and they do it to kind of grab people in it. And they don't care about necessarily true. They, mm -hmm. It's more so almost seem as if it's being driven by ratings or driven by wanting to seem as to promote prestige or they're, right. they're equating likes or views with prestige or being the top or being the most right and that's further from the truth uh right. in fact i would say out of the 90 93 93 million the last time i i i remember of the george floyd thing was probably her most popular work uh from candace owens but she pretty much uh out of that probably not even a million people if so really liked and favored so think about how many people didn't like the video Mm -hmm. Think about Donald Trump, how he's trying to rally it to reach out to minorities. And at that time, you couldn't tell me, and I got calls from people I haven't talked to in years from the inner city. Who is this person? I'm seeing people not even involved in politics talk about Candace Owens. Right, and that right. ain't a good thing. She <laughs> may think that's a good thing. But when right. it comes to whoever puts that video next to whoever, like President Trump, he's getting ready to... Uh, you know, come up to a lifetime, uh, an election of his lifetime in a whole country, we got to be mindful. We, we need minority votes. And this isn't just about votes, but we right. sincerely are trying to build people, build relationships, and not only just in roles, we're trying to build a role, period. We're right. trying to, to develop some uh, collaborative uh, projects in inner city. I know I am, and I can tell you more about that off the record because I don't even tell people what I really do in the right. inner cities because I don't want it to be seen as that. I'm not doing it for that. I'm really trying to impact people. So I measure our success based on our impact to the ghetto and the areas that really need it. Like mm -hmm. Yeshua said, I don't come to be with those who are well. I'm, I'm here to be with the sick. So remember, they criticized him. What are you doing over there? And it honestly, it sounds like some of the red area. I don't have nothing in common with them. So right. she thinks she's so much better or she's at a different, that you can't reach these young, their lives are precious too. And you wonder why Black Lives Matter got their quote and why it's so clingy and why it's so significant, why they have relevance, because they have attached themselves to the Black struggle because many Black conservatives have not stepped up to say, all right. these black young men and women lives matter. Think of right. how powerful Candace Owens could be if she was in the inner city touching these young girls who eventually end up being sex trafficking victims. Right. You name right. it. Right. Okay. And and this is important for us to discuss. Number one, as black men, this was important. But number two, because of we all are interconnected. I believe the Lord had been building an army. Of, sure. of a remnant to speak truth. So we just can't have people getting so far out of whack to where it affects all of our message and it makes us look like we don't care, like we don't sure. care about people who may not have the same upbringing. We know Candace is not about that life. She ain't from the east side of Detroit. She's <laughs> not from the hood, okay? So I know that, but I didn't support her for that. I supported right. her because she was articulate, intelligent, and I, and I support Prager U and other universities. And if she's connected to that, I wouldn't want that to be jeopardized and so much other things. And I support freedom of speech. So let's just put that out there too, you know? So so looking at that situation when I met was just sickening because I felt like she directly and didn't apologize or say anything. Then you mm -hmm. jump to George Floyd, which came later. Mm -hmm. And let's talk on a body cam situation. So yes, the body cam has come out that showed a lot of the before. Everybody had these questions, what happened before? Mm -hmm. And long story short, the man was on some serious drugs, bad drugs. Now I come from the drug culture, so let me just a little bit of explain. Uh, this was a medic call. This wasn't a call where somebody needed to be really probably apprehended to that degree of uh, put on the ground or, or like he was in a, such a, a medical situation, he right. needed to kind of be contained but not contained. He was at yeah. the point where he was on such bad drugs, he started to panic. 
you have what you call a panic attack. Most people take Xanax when they have panic attacks. So let's say you on a drug that take you up. You almost have to take a drug to bring you down. And and police should know this because there's protocols. When you Mm -hmm. see someone that is that much on drugs and they're high, and first of all, this ain't a violent crime. You're not talking about weapons, guns, rape. You're not talking about nothing like a possible. And then nobody talks about the person who actually called the police on George Floyd. He looked like he was Middle Eastern or Arab. I don't know his background, but here, nobody talked about that. And now you have people who are hopping on a Black Lives Matter bandwagon. And yet sure. these are the, a lot of the people who are subscribing and in special interest to BLM. They were somewhat a part of calling the police on George Floyd. That, again, that's just the point. When you look at the video, you're going to see, okay, because we got in our mind, white people called the police on George Floyd. No, this wasn't a white person. So that, that makes a difference. Like th- this seriously. So this was an inner city hood story. You could tell. But basically they go up to the car, two officers, the past, it's actually three people in a car. So they're all in a vehicle. The, the person who went up to George Floyd, he's like, hey, you're not listening. You're not listening. And he's panicking. He's, you can tell he's, I know what a panic attack is. He's panicking. Not because necessarily nothing criminal, because he owns some dope. He owns some dope that's taking him or, or somewhere. Bad, synthetic bath salts. Probably. Correct. So, so it, it, it could have been synthetic. We don't really know. And at that point, it was a continual thing for about five or six so minutes or more of them trying to get him to comply because he's like, sir, please, please, sir. And he got his hands behind his back. They sit him against the wall. He's like, man, I can't take it. You know, he's talking about even then at certain points, they try to put him in the back of the police car. Now, anybody that ain't ever been in the back of the police car, understand it is very tight. That is a big dude. Right. And if you on, if you hide, he could have had a heart attack right in the back seat of the car because of claustrophobia. He kept right. saying, I'm claustrophobic. What he really wanted to say is I'm, on, I'm high and, and my heart rate. I, I can't, I can't stop. I can't, I'm going through something medical, but for whatever reason, he didn't come out and just say it. You know, he, he, he started to panic. I don't, I can't say, I only have seen this with drug addicts. And so when that started to happen, it just was a repeated thing of taking him from one place to like against the wall, trying to get him, force him into the car. That didn't work. Uh, it was just terrible because all these officers are there. Then they take him down the street to where the incident happens where eventually he, he's on the ground, the knee is put on his neck. They actually uh, restrained this man, putting their knee on his neck. And he already was having respiratory and other issues because he was on drugs. In my mind, that is neglect. That is, that is professional neglect. That mm-hmm. is willful homicide, if you ask me, because, mm-hmm. no, nah, I'm not going to say it's murder, in a sense, first degree murder. No, it's not. I don't think they premeditated. But they were highly ignorant. And I know that there's protocols. They didn't call the police once for George Floyd. And to me, that's the only thing that I see about this case. You hold him, you see, sit him down on a curb. Hey, he's, he's high because you can't restrain him at that point. Anything you do to him could cause him to have his heart rate to go up, could cause him to, to have a panic attack or even to ha- cause his body to physically fail. And, and that's pretty much what we've seen happen. So people are coming out now saying, Things like, uh, oh, this completely changes things. No, no, it doesn't. This only well, shows that this man was on on some dope. He was on some drugs, and he yeah. was not even treated with his with his constitutional rights to be That's protected true. while in the hands of police. I don't yeah. think these guys were the worst guys, and I'm not talking about the one who put his knee on his neck because I, I don't I don't really know. I didn't I didn't watch it and connect both videos because it's two different videos. But the mm-hmm. first officer who went to him. I don't think that person was trying to do anything malicious when it first started, but it went to there. And if you're insensitive to inner city black men and you, you let's say you don't really know how to inter- how to deal with people from certain walks of life, um, mm-hmm. then you, you may have different bias, prejudices. You may just consciously not necessarily know what you're doing at the time. But basically they just continue to try to restrain this person even before he got on the ground and the man was high. He was erratic to the, the officer said, are you on something? So if an officer before all of this stuff starts say, are you on something? The first thing should have been in, in their mind is he's on something. Let's try to get him some medical. Okay, let's cuff him. Let's sit him down. Let's, let's, let's put him to the oh, side. Oh, ambulance. Right. Yeah, let, let's get an ambulance. Let's get somebody out here. 
and let's see if we can get him some oxygen. Let's see right. if we can get him something that can help him. Maybe he need Narcan. We don't know what he's on. Right. But anything would have helped versus just trying to sedate him. And I think sometimes police officers, and I'm I'm so pro-blue, so I'm, I'm not anti-police at all. Um, I, I can tell you success stories. One of the some things I've went through legally because police were on my side is why I'm sitting here talking to you right now. Um, but they basically got this young man, tried to subdue him. They tried to, to basically just restrain him. It was their restraint and their mm -hmm. restraint tactics that helped lead to his death. Sure. And that's just point blank, period. So coming out saying that I, I, I'm against George Floyd, that's marketing, that's PR, coming out saying these things, bringing up his record, which they have not proved because the case, and they said, oh, he put a gun to a pregnant woman's belly. That is the most fabricated, manufactured, disinformation lie I've ever seen. For one, the case didn't go to trial. So Cedric, anybody that ever, they say, or you look up a record on somebody, if they didn't go to trial, number no two things. Number one, the details of the case is greatly lost because you, you didn't cross-examine evidence. You don't have testimony under oath. You don't have witnesses, experts. Nothing is cross-examined. You don't have any type of uh, um, information that you can pull to prove which is which. Like, you don't know. And then the second thing is that he was, he was actually convicted of, I think it was... Uh, I think it was some type of robbery. I think aggravated, I think it was That's aggravated it. robbery or something on the lines. But anyway, it had nothing to do with a gun. It, it possibly right. a weapon, but not right. necessarily a gun, which is something else that if you're a felon and you have a gun, you're going to have some type of felony firearm. You're not, the gun charges alone going to get you more prison time than anything else. So if they, so these are just all things as a person that want criminal justice reform. When I see people pull up a record and say that he did these things, didn't go to court. It wasn't cross-examined. We don't know. It's not even, he wasn't even charged with that. And then you look up his record. This ain't to defend George Floyd. This is to defend any person. If he was white, I would say the same thing. Because right. truth of the matter, we should be for justice. This was a time with George Floyd and Ahmed Arbery for conservatives to come together. Exactly. And we right. could have rallied around this and we could have helped heal our country. And it's right. sad that us black conservatives fight independently for so long then we end up getting picked up by the establishment GOP or different people, and then we create our own establishment. Right. And exactly. I'm so not for that. We need to keep things in the grassroots, keep the power with the people. Right, let's, keep, let's keep bettering and pushing them the movement. And right. so these things could have easily got past. So her bringing up his record, you did not disqualify. I'm from Flint. Most of the people in my city hometown of Flint got some type of record, whether it's a citation, a ticket, you got something. I got a history. So, so my thing is, you discriminate such a large portion of people that could be reached by blacks. If right. this is black people to exit, well, sh that's the ghetto. That's the inner city because right. that's where liberalism is launching. That's where right. the cesspool is. So, why would you just discriminate against people like that? Like, so those things in my mind, I just could not understand it. And 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 for that, I I needed to speak out against that. For that, I had to make examples when Black Enterprise posts positive messages of Black people. Why aren't Candace Owens speaking to this? When, when Black people produce uh, their own stock exchange, they come out with their own wineries, they come out as some of the father-son financial curriculums. We don't have that. So now it sounds to me, she's turned into special interests on the right. Yeah. And just because you're on the right doesn't make you right. <laughs> like, it doesn't. So now that's where I stand when it came to that situation. George Floyd, Hamid Arbery, and knowing our story. So my father's death as a homicide in 2008 is what caused me to get involved in activism. It, it wasn't yeah. to be a politician, even though I'm currently uh, elected as a state precinct delegate multiple times over. And I'm also the former uh, precinct uh, ethnic vice chair of the Michigan Republican Party. So I came up with people like Ronna Ronna McDaniel, got more votes than her actually during uh, our actually state convention. So we were probably one of the best political teams in the country. And we yeah. helped turn Michigan red for the first time in 30 plus years, like almost 50 years, like we flipped history. So, right. you know, they came for us after that election. The oh, yeah. the damn, they came for us. But I'm just giving you some background on my motives, where I come from, and hearing your story, I want to hear more of it. You know, uh, we're, we're getting close to running out of time. I want to give you some, some last uh, uh, statements or anything that, that you would like to say. 
but they're yeah. gonna, you're going to hear more of Cedric Knight. You're going to hear more of myself. I, brother, this is just the start. This is just the introduction, and I wanted to touch on some things, but I right. just wanted it to be to be known. I just wanted it to be heard from yourself and from me, our positions as black men, because in right. restoring black fatherness, you know, from fatherless homes, you are father. You got beautiful children. Um, how old are you, by the way? I'm 35, so I, I don't know if you're my... I'm 38, um, and, you know, touch, touch on uh, regards to the, the whole situation. I love how you broke it down with Candace, how there's been a divide within the conservative movement, and I'm seeing that. I even posted uh, maybe once once or twice something great about an African-American doctor, a pilot, or something like that. I had a black liberal come on my page and, um, you know, said it's about time that she went into a whole nother realm of um, her discovery of why we shouldn't be conservatives. Um, but not only that, I, I also noticed there was a white conservatives like why does it have to be black i was like hey i'm proud of my heritage i'm proud of what we are accomplishing uh considering the, the history that we have we can't cast that out yes we've had struggles we've had uh circumstances situations that possibly have held us back however we have the first black president elected twice right um and the, the percentage of african americans is only 13 percent. so there's obviously white people that um voted for barack obama uh, and that was change uh, for us, but I think there was more racial divide that started under him. But, you know, to indicate that the most powerful man in the world was Barack Obama for eight years shows that this country is not necessarily uh, race, racism. There's racism on both sides, but that's not the, uh, that's not the, the, the main problem. And like you said, the main problem is within our own communities, our own household, where we have rappers and females calling each other bees and hoes, and the rappers talking about killing each other. Mm -hmm. Most of those rappers are not calling them talking about killing the white guy, okay? We're talking about killing your next brother. You know, I'm gonna kill you, vice versa. So we have to look at ourselves, too, uh, from a standpoint of leadership, political leadership, uh, but not, I always say um, that the church spiritual condition is a direct reflection of our community's condition Correct. not only but, but mentally uh, dr martin luther king he he uh he promoted the bloodstained banner of jesus christ and he got the civil rights bill passed and everyone was in unity no one was out there sagging their pants and Correct. turned up. and we we went through it but, but and we were standing with israel by the way <laughs> jews is with us you know what i mean so right exactly so so god really moved and shifted that force but now we have a new um, new spirit, uh, which is uh, that, that whole thing with George Floyd. It, it, I, I try not to be a conspiracy theorist, but it was just like the timing with the COVID hit. And then this is on, on live TV. You see this this officer literally putting his, net, his knee on this guy's neck as if his intent was to possibly cause some type of harm. Even, let's say that he didn't even kill him. You know, he could have put him in a coma or something like that. But for it to be publicized like that, I don't know, but that's and, just- and, and, and let me just touch on that, brother. You're gonna make me say this because you said something else because I follow you closely, but yeah. I just seen a video in Detroit, in a Coney Island, and if you haven't, I'll send you the video. It's one of the, the most heart-wrenching stories. A young man sees, it's, a, it's, a, it's probably like eight people in a, in a closed-in lobby. Think mm -hmm. the protective glass in Coney Island, you know, in Detroit, you got bulletproof glass in a Coney because, you know, it go down like that. but. He comes in, he's sitting there normal, he has a mask on. Next thing you know, a young man rises up. Clearly they knew each other. There was something that happened for him. Yeah. You seen that. So it was, it was like it was a hit. The young man come up, these guys 22 years old, these are young men, like they all under 30. One yeah. guy stands up, pulls his gun out, walks over to him, shoots him in the head. Right. Shoots two other people, they fall down, <laughs> shoot them again. Long right. story short, he murdered three out of the four people he shot. Jeez. And in my mind, that's just as bad as the Floyd and worse. But this has been happening. So I'm not saying that was the only thing, because we, we we believe in, in, in a double-edged sword. I, yeah. I'm about combating both. Black-on-black yeah. black crime and what the police do that we don't talk about is the police state. It's a condition yeah. of the police state, not just white officers or white yeah. police. It's the yeah. police state, that mentality, the yeah. police union, that is kind of what causes us to be desensitized. Star Parker said it best that we get the rebels and the rookies. I, I believe that. Um, mm -hmm. but, but you made a statement, thug life is trash. I'm going to end with this. Thug life <laughs> is trash. And, and now, you know, I know a little bit about thug life. So I'm like, 
man, this brother thinking like me. Cause I say it, <laughs> and I say thug, I say thug life is trash, and I'll even say the inner city culture, you know, the rap culture, whatever you want to say, I say it's trash. But when you say it, and when I say it, I think we're coming from two different perspectives. When mm-hmm. I say it, I'm saying like I lived it, I did it, I seen it, and I'm telling you it don't work. Like. When you say it, you're saying, look, I don't have to be that. I'm a well-educated black man. I, mm-hmm. My kids are taken care of. I do things the right way. Mm-hmm. That you're doing things the wrong way. And from that perspective, and I think they're both equally, they're both sure. equally powerful. And, 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 I, and I say this, and I, I speak from this perspective. Me growing up middle class out in the East End and stuff like that, but I still wanted to be part of my, my brothers and stuff like that. So I listened to uh, the Hot Boys, Lil Wayne, 50 Cent. Um, all those different things. And in my mind, I started to play out what they was preaching to me in my consciousness. Correct. I do this girl. I wanted to smoke his weed. I'm ready to go and act the complete fool, right? Mm-hmm. And that's music, you know, um, subconsciously that was in my spirit because that's what I'm listening to. So Correct. when I lifestyle uh, or, or trying to be something I was necessarily not, that's the point and the perspective that I speak from. And now what I'm hearing now with these new rappers, oh, this is crazy. Worse. I'm listen hearing- to me. Listen to me, bro. Look, Tupac came to mind. So, he- so, so listen to me. I, when you said it, I'm thinking to myself, we got to have a conversation about Pac. I wasn't going to go here, because, but we got to. We got to have a conversation about Tupac because oftentimes we don't have, and I did a lot of research just recently, just for whatever reason, I was, I've come across a lot of things about Pac. And now as a grown man versus the kid I was listening to him, it's some things we got to say. Yes, we love Tupac and his, his pro-Black, his pro-positive aspect of being a political leader, taking care of the family, taking care of kids and elderly and giving back to your community. But we also got to absolutely denounce the fact that he killed himself game banging. Yeah, he basically yeah. got himself into ruthlessness, lawlessness, because he really didn't have his father really in his life. So right. people like Suge influenced him too much. Right. And, he, and he took himself when he was one of the most articulate. I mean, the young man went to art school. He was such a powerful instrument, but the streets killed him. The street right. culture is what I call The street drug culture, and I call it the gangster rap culture, that's right. what killed Pac, that, like flat out. And I heard it come from you. Like thug life is, is, is cause I think, you know, that's what we're talking. It's, 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 it's garbage. Right. So and how about we, so Thug Life stands, the acronym stands for True Hustler Under God. That's mm-hmm. what, I don't know if you ever heard of that before. Yeah, but, but I, I look at the, 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 I would say the, 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 the uh, matriarch of it. You know what I mean? Tupac yeah. was like the, the number one yeah. of Thug Life. Right. And, like, and like Nas, I mean, he told stories. I mean, those are the type of, you know, hip, I like, if anything, I like hip hop. Rappers are just, they just tell them all. You know, crazy stuff. I, I say that I say I like rap, but I'll say not everything in hip hop culture. I don't know if you ever heard of uh, C. L. Lewis, uh, who, who talked about the wickedness behind hip hop and things like that. But uh-huh. Nas is a good example because in, in different aspects, like he was a different rapper. I remember me and uh, what is his name? Um, I think his name Hazmat. Hazmat. Uh, Hazmat. He's a well-known activist. And I remember me and him kind of got into it because he was he was he was like trashing rappers and hip hop, but he was only talking about people like Wu Tang Clan, Nas. It's like he was old. I'm like, dude, them rappers are like positive PG thirteen right, compared right. to like the garbage people like Lil Wayne and the people that's out here that's demonic like that now. So it's like he didn't get it, but you just you just hit home on the fact that we have to denounce that thug because that culture helped. Yeah rear up a generation of, of fatherless kids sure. didn't have we see the rebellion we see it right now with police sure. Uh, sure. I'm certain that the thug like Pac would be yeah he would be against police right now but yet the real him somebody that could have mentored and taught him would have said wait a minute this mm-hmm. ain't all on police this is a right. little bit of no. a lot of the fathers not being there because ain't no way my son your son is going to be in any of these situations that mm-hmm. we've seen these young black men in. And we're not saying, cause we got stories of the, the good kid out of, uh, I don't know where he's from. I don't know if it's Colorado, it's some other state, good guy. Well, he somehow they tried to restrain him. They gave him like some type of- um, Condition, yeah. In, in, in the police custody that eventually made him slip into a coma. 
And he like died from all of it. Just from simply being somebody that matched the description. So we're not saying stuff don't happen from just normal situations where good people, but the but the moral of the story, thug life is trash. Like this culture, this toxic culture, like I said and I posted about Donald Trump needing to make Chicago and their drill music the focal of discussion on the national level. You know, every so often this music has to get judged by our nation because we yeah. allow it. You yeah. know, and, and when you if this research drill music in South Side of Chicago and it's murder music, they talk about all the ops they kill. They talk about all the people that they murder in their music. And it's just once the other side here, then they go hunting for them. Like it's they they literally do this all day. And they yeah. rob yeah, and, and let me tell you also about Beyonce, her new Black is King. Uh, so I posted something, and you said all the witches and warlocks and mm -hmm. everything came to my page attacking me. I don't know if you saw it. No, I think I seen you post it. Yeah, I think I seen you post that. If you go to the comments, a lot of Africans, oh, man, like, they, they came hard at me. Uh, but nevertheless, I mean, that's expected, right? Um, and we know you're giving out truth. But um, one lady posted uh, a snippet of the movie or something on Disney Plus, uh, Black is King, um, monic piece where uh, Beyonce is kind of attacking Christianity stuff. So I watched it this morning. I was thinking about making a video and posting it, but it specifically said, um, and that's demonic part, um, not Beyonce, but another lady, there's no bow wow here, get your, get your spine strong or something like that. So it was a direct attack towards Christianity. What their, what their intent and their spirit is, is come back to the ancestors. We have all the power. Black is king. Leave the Bible out. You don't need the Bible. And and isn't, it, isn't it interesting how crazy. we go pro-black nationalists, how we forget our morality, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that actually helped free the slaves, who actually helped build up our morality in the African-American community, and yet we try to throw it down. And I also say that this also shows the breakdown amongst Judaism and Christianity, how we mm -hmm. got to get back on one accord because because of this divide, when they attack Christianity, it's not felt as Judaism, but really the people eventually are going to come after both. They're going to come after getting rid of the whole Bible. And that's what they're trying to rewrite. It's, 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 it's a level of nationalism. It's a level of, of so-called black pride. Uh, and and I, don't, I don't mean that we have to not uh, enjoy being who we are as, as African men, uh, as ethnic men. But there's a degree where you said, and I, we both agree, no, no, man, after the flesh, we believe in us being spirit beings first. And yeah. everything else is secondary, third theory, it might not even make the list if, yeah. you know what I mean, if it's not morally and biblically correct. So, exactly. no, I, I heard about what she was putting out. And maybe me and you need to do these updates more often when different things, different topics, and we'll do that and we'll come strong. But I just okay. wanted to, to, to more, more than likely appreciate you uh, and give you any last words of anything else that you want to say, because I, I I think uh, we went over time, but yeah. I'm appreciative of the time. We hit some heavy topics. We talked right. about and just clearing up some things with Candace Owens. We, we talked about the thug life culture and, and just our backgrounds and where we come from. And I'm going to be making sure that I, I post you in this and we get this video out. But thank you, man, for coming with me, talking with me this morning. Uh, the nightly word, is that still going? Is that still up? Yeah. I have to get it back up and going. I still so got the money. Do you got a podcast now? Give yeah. out your information, your IG, your Facebook, so that people can know how to reach I have all my information. I, I, I've actually hired someone to do a bunch of my stuff for me. But uh, yeah, I'm just a nightly word on YouTube. Uh, I've done like small sermons and different things like that. I'm also now hosting a uh, weekly Bible study every Sunday uh, at 4 30 to 6. Um, with different denominations, Catholics, non-Catholics, um, you know, we're just breaking down the Word of God. We started from Genesis uh, and going through. Uh, so we got about six or seven people on that, um, and then just kind of whatever the Lord leads me to do. So I'll just keep on posting my information out there on Facebook, uh, any social media outlets, uh, but you can follow me on my YouTube channel uh, if you choose, uh, just to hear an encouraging word. Um, and yes, thank you for allowing me to come in uh, on today. Uh, I think also what we would love, I would love to talk about um, are the initiatives that you're doing and Correct. what I do um, if we can access some a lot of funds from these different organizations. But I definitely want to touch on that. Uh, Absolutely, next. man. And, and today, get out and vote, you know, primary day. So as soon as I get through with this, I'm going to vote. So right. uh, and for those who don't know, if you're in Michigan, uh, one of the main people I really want to promote uh, Shane Hernandez, Carrie Benavolio, some good people out there. 
uh, Mike Dittmer and different people. Um, but again, vote. We got we got a, a couple months coming up, month and a half really after this, and you know this is going to be a demonic season. Yeah. We got to pray. Got to keep it. Yeah, got to pray and fast. Got to stay prayed up. Uh, but brother, I got your back. I got your okay. back. I respect what you're doing. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna connect. I got to get your yeah. number information, yeah. man, and we're gonna do this. But uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the Urban Difference. My my goal with the Urban Difference commentary curriculum uh, is just to bring unique uh, urban perspectives, to bring different uh, uh, unique perspectives that I can bring forth from authentic content to help build upon what everybody else is doing in the conservative movement to just continue to do that. So thank you, my brother. I really appreciate you for all you've done. I learned right. a lot, heard a lot, and we're going to make sure we continue to fight. God bless. Bless. See you.